Here's some more of my favorite parts from the book Don't Settle for Less by Sarah Jakes Roberts. This is out of the chapter on purpose. When God's destiny for your life begins to outweigh the distractions around you, you're honing the gift of focus. The first time I read that, I thought it said honoring the gift of focus. <laughs> Both are good, though. She's talking about how can you can be one call, one email, one comment, one moment could change the momentum of your life. If you're too busy trying to appease the distractions in your life, you may miss the opportunity that was meant to reveal something exceptional about yourself. You want another reason why you need to have the discipline to focus? Not only because excelling in your purpose depends on it, but also because how excellently you produce your purpose does as well. Too often, we can become so consumed with excelling and going to the next level that we don't take the time to perfect our gift on the level that we are on. Here's the reality. Many people have the gift you currently possess, but what they do not have is your heart and unique ability to translate that gift into the world and culture. That's why you can't be saddened when you see people who appear to be taking over in a certain arena. Just because someone is doing well does not mean your gift has become null and void. Mm, that's powerful. You must be willing to not be distracted by someone else's progress long enough to see your growth. Mm, mm, mm. I'm skipping around a little bit because this is so powerful. Good confirmations and revelations. Some words she used sometimes I've never even seen before. <laughs> and I love learning new words. But um, she says, I've learned that my nerves were distracting me from my mission and ultimately deterring me from my purpose. That's when she first started public speaking and she would get nervous and, you know, her hands would shake and stuff like that. She says, your inner emotions and insecurities play a greater role and distracting you from bringing forth the gifts that are inside of you more than the external ones you have. God has given you a divine strategy and capability to control your life. You don't have to wait for people to understand you before you begin to develop. The reality is that people understand you by what they observe of you. If you're a people pleaser seeking validation then people will understand that they'll always be able to get you to abandon your mission and give them your focus. Mm -mm -mm. My God, my God. Prioritize your life. Anyone who penalizes you from, for pursuing your inner excellence will punish you when you acquire external success. If they cannot handle your hustle, they won't be able to celebrate your victories. Don't be discouraged when people fail to understand why you focus on what matters the most is increasing. Mm -mm -mm. Ooh, Sarah Jakes Roberts got me speechless over here. Powerful just like her daddy. I thank God for her. And this book has just been standing out to me for a reason. And it's right on time that I finally got it. Even though I know her new book is out, um, Woman Evolve, and I look forward to reading that one next. But I think I'm going to get the audio book for this because I need to be listening to it when I wake up, when I fall asleep, when I'm riding in the car. Um, it's powerful. And sometimes, you know, repetition, we need that repetition to keep hearing it so it can take root. And so that we don't have information overload. You know, that's why I'm like, well, maybe I only need to do a chapter a day, no more than two, because I just really want to like meditate on it, reflect on it, see how I can apply it to my life and take action and how the stuff like even yesterday I was reading the one on um, patterns because that's the area that I've been studying uh, on my life and just paying attention to different patterns that I may have. 
and why I may have these patterns. Of course, a lot of us, our issues go back to our childhood and stuff that we had experienced. And when we are thinking negatively or wrong, then that causes a certain emotion that causes a certain action. Right. And so a lot of times we're not really being ourselves 100 percent authentically ourselves, even with our decision making, because we made it out of our emotions. Right. Out of like limited thinking and beliefs and lies that we believed about ourselves um, because of something. Maybe we endured some type of trauma in our childhood or disrespect, whether it's from our parents or from, you know, some elder or somebody or teacher or, um, you know, religion or whatnot. Because we have been, you know, trained and conditioned in this Western society. And so, so many times when we're hearing all these voices and we may think that it's God or ourselves, but it was really who we was conditioned to be and the mask that we were um, conditioned to put on because when we were ourselves, we didn't feel accepted, right? So those are some of the things that I have been, you know, realizing and learning and growing more. Even this year in 2020, this is August 2nd. Well, now it's the 3rd because it's almost 3 a.m. <laughs> but... um. I was reading this book yesterday morning too, around five, six, seven in the morning or earlier. Um, and just grateful for the confirmations, the revelations, and just thankful for what God is doing in her life and how authentic she is and how vulnerable and transparent she's willing to be. And that helps other people like me. That's that that's more of a challenge for us to do um, when we're actually still going through some of those things. It's easier for me to share when I've already made it through and I feel like I've made a certain level of success already in that area, right? So I'm just grateful that um, she's letting us know that, you know, we're not crazy. We're not alone to feel some of these feelings we feel when we go through some of the things we do um, because we can be so super religious sometimes and legalistical and stuff and not be, you know, able to know how to comfort somebody and relate to somebody and be real with ourselves as well as them. And if we're not being real with ourselves, it's hard for us to realize that we're not being real with other people. Because I used to pride myself in being, you know, oh, I keep it real. But I realized that I wasn't always keeping it real because I wasn't even with myself. Because I didn't want to feel weak or because of the way I was conditioned and the way I was raised and as well as religion, right? And so I'm, I'm learning a lot and I'm grateful. And I hope this is blesses you as well. Wanted to share it.